here's the outline. Here's the outline. This is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to try to remember to put timestamps to all seven of these points. I'm giving you seven concrete things that I think are important bits of information for you to learn to improve your resume. I want this to be efficient and I want this to be easy for someone to get value out of. Everything I say here today, you do not have to take my word for it. Okay. A, B test. Make a resume that uses my advice, send it out to a bunch of jobs, and then just see if it's better. And if it's not, go back and ignore me and come back and leave a comment and tell me I'm terrible. Okay? Totally fine. I can take that. But just please try the advice. How do you know that your resume is the problem? So everyone says that applying to jobs is like a numbers game. Okay? And I would agree. I think it is a numbers game. But I think some of you hear that and you think that it is like an insane numbers game and you're not really that worried about how low your talk to recruiter rate is. I send out uh, 30 resumes. I send out 30 applications and I get back, you know, two calls. And then I think there are some of you out there that are sitting in this camp where you're actually sending out 300 resumes and you're getting two callbacks and you're like, well, it's a numbers game. I would say this is a red flag. This is a red flag. At this point, you probably should start to look and see if there is something that you can do to improve the resume. I really think the main takeaway that I'd like to put into the video is this metric. I really want to emphasize that you should use this metric for A-B testing. It's like your application to interview rate. Your resume is not everything you've ever done ever. Your resume is your greatest hits. The front page to your work. It is not your work. How long, if you had to guess, literally type in chat, and unless you've seen the answer already, how long do you think that the average hiring manager or recruiter looks at a resume? It is six to seven seconds. Six to seven seconds is all you have to make an impression, okay? You do not have two pages of time, especially, especially if you are a junior engineer looking for your first job. And I'm sorry to say this. I really am. you you literally have not done anything that warrants two pages of stuff. Keep removing the least important thing until it's one page. No matter what, it has to be one page. And I can be wrong, okay? You can, you can tell me that you, that you made your resume one page and you went from this to this, okay? You might be in some extremely rare circumstance. You can tell me I'm wrong. Come back. Just please try it use short bullet points obviously we are still looking at this through the lens of you have six to seven seconds this is much easier to read and conceptualize how am i as a recruiter in my six to seven seconds gonna parse this meaningfully do you see how much easier it is to just glance and parse this you can even just like bold some of this stuff made company 10 million dollars this is the perfect resume bullet point. Nothing will beat this. You can show impact through short bullet points. Do not think that each bullet point necessarily needs to be self-contained. They can build on one another like I've done here. The important thing is that your bullet point should tell a story, but it should be easily parsable. Try to stick to 10 words or less in a bullet point. This is sort of arbitrary break the rule if you need to but i think it's a helpful model for how short these bullet points should ideally be many of you are paying a lot to go to college okay and so you're like that shit is going first give me my education section hell yeah but for a lot of you you've got to understand if you have things like internships or whatever that's way more of a standout most people are probably going to have an education section on their resume. Not everyone's going to have an internship section or maybe projects, right? Maybe you want to put projects on there. So 
You've got to put the information that you think might differentiate you from another candidate first. Again, we're going to keep coming back to this. Six to seven seconds. I think this is a mistake that I made, objective mistake that I made in my first resumes. Here's how I would power rank it if you've got it. Real professional experience, right? I'm talking like you worked at an internship. You worked at a place that does this for a living. You were able to be mentored by other engineers. That goes first. Then you've got projects. Then you've got like literally everything else. And then education goes at the bottom. They will want to check to make sure that you have an education system section at some smaller companies. But that's not the thing that makes them decide whether or not they want to hire you. They're going to look at this and go, wow, that's cool. I want to interview this person. Do they have this? And then they'll scan your headers and see that you do. And they'll go, great. That's great and they'll, you'll be in the clear. Give hard numbers or make them up. And you might be asking yourself, Brad, isn't that unethical? And I'm gonna say like asterisk. Like, I mean, is it the best? No, but tons of companies are gonna be like, we are gonna give you a fast paced learning environment and we're gonna mentor you. And then they just throw you in the deep end and your job is to close tickets and that's it, okay? They don't always fill their end of the promise. They might be like, you have opportunity for growth. And you don't because your team is seven developers and six of them are more senior than you and they don't need an extra person at that level and they don't have the budget for it. OK, so companies lie to you all the time. White lies, white lies. Do not be the guy that's like. Led team driving. Ten billion dollars. Of revenue. Uh, when you actually were like a shift lead at McDonald's, okay? Recruiters spot this a mile away. Let's say $100,000 of additional revenue. You don't know that that's true, but it's like a fairly believable number. All you have to do is if asked, be like, oh yeah, they projected that across the next five years, it would lead to $100,000 of revenue. Like if they're really skeptical, just push it out even more, make it smaller. You want to underflate, underinflate if pushed because you don't have great ways to back this up. But they're not going to call your company and be like, did they actually do this? Concrete, not super questionable. This 20% number you maybe don't know is true, but it's believable. So I want to clarify about the type of buzzwords that you need to have on your resume, especially as a software engineer, and the types of buzzwords that you do not need to have that you should avoid on your resume what are like general buzzwords okay synergy what uh like passion i'm passionate okay everyone's back i'm creative i'm create i love getting to stretch my creative juice everyone is these things yeah so i guess cliches is what i'm talking about hard worker creative Go get her. Go get her. Oh, that's a good one. Proven track record. Like, bro, team player. These are wasted words, people. These are wasted words. These do not mean anything. Now we're going to say, like, what I'm going to call good buzzwords, specific buzzwords. No sequel. You can imagine that a position might be like, we want you to have experience with no sequel. Java. Python. They want to know that you've worked with these technologies before. Microservices. They would, this is why I'm not just calling it like technologies, because they might want to know that you've worked with microservices. Agile. They might want to know that you have experience with the agile framework, because again, not everyone does. How do you know which of these things to prioritize? It's so simple. They tell you, look at the job description. OK, if you see a job description that has microservices in the description and it's not on your resume freaking add it add it make multiple resumes you might be pl applying to jobs in multiple spaces right you might be applying to like low level like embedded systems type jobs because you technically have the experience but you're a junior engineer you're not picky right maybe you also are applying to like sort of like web app jobs do you see how these are all like very distinct buckets that you can imagine that there's very little overlap between this job description and this job description? Just make separate resumes. Now is the part of the 
thing where I have to tell you that I'm not sponsored because I have like freaking 1500 subscribers. So obviously I'm not sponsored. There's this website called Flow CV and Flow CV is amazing. I wish I could log in, but I can't because then I'm going to dox myself. Flow CV gives you like a form to input your information and then they give you like the rendered resume because you're not just building the resume. If I've got like, let's say like job one and I've got job two, they give you a little like checkbox for these things where you can toggle these things on and off, right? So I can just toggle off job two and it re-renders the resume without it. But the information is persisted. The information is persisted in the like saved in your form. So you don't have to like manually be deleting these things and saving it to a separate place and whatever. It's all saved in one spot and you just got to toggle some checkboxes. It's not just one. It's not just one res rendered template, right? Like you can see you fill out the information once and with one click, you can get this resume or this resume or this resume in the slew of resumes that are all white and boring. When you get in front of a person and you see this, it's very nice. It stands out. And that's your goal because you have six to seven seconds. We're going to keep coming back to that. Make minor tweaks for each job description. Applying to a job, if it takes you five minutes instead of 30 seconds, that's not a huge difference because you shouldn't have to be sending out 300 applications. You should have to be sending out like 60. Bonus tip. Let's talk about our bonus tip. You might very well have skills that you have not been able to demonstrate in your project section or in your work experience section. This is where a lot of people put in a skills section and I think it's good. And I wouldn't, I also wouldn't do the thing where you state like proficiency. Don't give them a reason to think that you're bad at something. They see your sh shallow progress bar on a skill that they think you need. It gives them a reason to pass you up. Don't give any reasons to pass you up. Let's say I've worked in Java for three hours on a school homework assignment. Okay, boom, Java's going on there. Done, right? Let's say that because I used Java, object-oriented design, because they might be worried that this is not something that you can do and just be overconfident okay you can do it i promise you'll learn on the job you can do it so if you have any exposure to things just throw it on there i think that the main thing that i want people to think about is this is everything we talked about has been engineered around the fact that recruiters look at your resume for six to seven seconds so everything is about making the biggest impact humanly possible in six to seven seconds. And I genuinely encourage you to set a timer for six seconds or seven seconds. Close your eyes, set the timer, look at your resume and scan it and see what you see about your resume and keep doing this over time because you, you want to make sure it's the things that you want people to see.